Hello everyone. I'm trying to get my other glove on. There we go. Stop moving the phone around for you. All right, another cool hike. I'm afraid we're in for more these days than not. And right now, since I'm in a primitive campsite, the only thing I can really do is build a fire in the fire pit. And those don't work to help heat my tent up at all, so I have to stay outside. Let's see, where's my trail? So many leaves down, it's hard to see where the trail is. I think this is it. Close enough anyway, I can see where I'm going. Alright, for today. You've heard it said that you need to be filled by the Spirit. Well, that's absolutely true. And the key is to stay filled. It's hard for some people to do that. You know, it's like you get excited, you go to a revival meeting or you go to something and you get all filled with the Spirit. And over the course of the next few days, that level just keeps dropping and then you're empty again. And then you go to your next get-together and you get filled again. That's not going to do you very well coming up. You're going to want to stay filled with the Spirit. Whatever it takes, whatever you have to do, you need to stay filled with the Spirit because you can't let your guard down. You want the protection from the armor of God? Staying filled with the Spirit is the best way to implement all that. If you grieve the Spirit or you quench the Spirit, like you can you can be a Christian and be completely with your back turned to God. Don't expect him to do as much for you as someone who's staying filled with the Spirit. You can't lose your salvation. But I guarantee you, the Spirit's not going to let you live in sin for very long. He may let you live in it long enough so that you regret doing it, and then he'll save you. He's not going to come and get you before you regret it. All right. I got over to this little dirt road, so now I can quietly walk. I don't have to, have to listen to the leaves. We do have the river ahead, though, that you're going to hear that in a bit. Oh, the wind is blowing. And I'm walking into it because it's a north wind and I'm walking north. So, what do you do to stay filled with the Spirit? Well, real easy. You try to be as sin-free as possible. Now, we know it's difficult. We've all got our temptation that we can sin in. And we can't get rid of our sin nature. So, to put it in the form of living water that Jesus talked about, you have to just keep going back to the well. Get yourself sitting, stop, repent, ask for forgiveness, and move back on to the path again. Rinse and repeat. You have to do it a hundred times a day. Do it. You want to stay filled with the Spirit. As the world gets tougher, and it will. You know, I think we just averted World War III with the Poland rocket thing. 
but that just shows you how close we are. Something like that. A lot of warships so close to each other out in sea. A lot of airplanes flying over airspace are getting close to it. Wouldn't take much for someone to push the button. I got the sun behind me again. I like my uh, movies again, and I'll use another movie reference. We have our the day of the year stood still. When the spaceship lands and the alien gets off, everybody's standing around with their weapons pointing at them. First off, never point a weapon at anybody unless you intend to kill or to harm. That's the number one safety rule. Every gun is loaded would be another safety rule. And never point it at something you don't intend to kill. And then you won't have an accident like happened in that movie where the soldier accidentally fired his gun. Nerves are on edge. The other thing too is you never put your finger on the trigger again unless you intend to kill. Interesting how this river can be so smooth and calm and all of a sudden hit rapids like this. If you go to a, an event or if there's some kind of a, a protest, There have been more protests for bad than for good lately, but if you go to any one of them, the opposing side might do something that gets them into trouble. So be aware of that. As things get tougher and tougher, don't take the law into your own hands. That never comes out good. almost to one of my campsites that I was at earlier, right along the river. That's what I'm doing today, is walking along the river. It's right there. I got a, a map of their trails here. Some are finished, some aren't. But if you can see every place you're going, you're pretty good at getting around. You don't have to need it. You don't need a map. When you get into the woods and you can't see, that's where the map helps. Doesn't do any good to leave breadcrumbs either. Well, the wildlife might appreciate it, but it won't get you home. You don't have to tie ribbons on the trees. They've already done that because this is a county park and state parks do the same thing. They paint the trees or they put up metal placards or whatever and you've got signs. You never have to worry about getting lost. And if you've got a phone to get around in, you can actually turn on the navigation and you can find your way around as long as the phone's working. All you gotta do is put the uh, park name in it or someplace you know that there is a marker in the phone and it will pull the whole map up. You don't have to set a goal to walk to a certain place. All you gotta do is to walk and watch yourself on the map. I don't know if I'm going to get you close enough. I got a couple of deer I'm going to put post at the end. They're just still pictures I took yesterday. Today I saw a deer swimming across the river. 
too far away for this camera. And there's a log out into the river and there's like 15 turtles sitting on it, sunning themselves. Again, too far away. And I think it's all the way at the end here. So you can see where I'm at. I got this great big gigantic field and this little road along here. And on the riverside, there's a bunch of camping grounds. And they should be marked. Okay, this is campsite three. I was in one when I first stayed here behind me. They said if I go to campsite 12, there's an eagle's nest across the river. I'm going to do my best to let you see it, but I suspect it's too far away. I have a little mini binoculars, but I didn't bring them. But anyhow, when things start happening, you want to keep popping off that spirit. Make sure you're as close to God as you possibly can through the Spirit. That is your only protection. Satan's not going to try to protect you. He's going to try to kill you. And he's got a lot of friends down here. We don't have to worry about the Antichrist because we'll be getting out of here about the time he shows up. We're not sure of the exact timing of all the events starting things. We got the Magog War. We got the Antichrist showing up. Or we have Satan showing up first, then the Antichrist. If you use the Revelation 12 sign and Satan coming down. We have the Magog War. So what's happening first? I don't know. But it's all going to happen real fast. When it's, once it starts, it's going to go bing, bing, bing. And the world's going to go, oh my God, what was that? Oh my God, what was that? Oh my God, running through the streets, panicking. Hiding under rocks. Protect me from this ruler of the universe. Who we wouldn't listen to. And there are going to be some... I'm hoping not as many as it looks like. But some's going to turn right to God and say, we don't want anything to do with you. We hate you. Under the full control of the spirit of Satan. <sighs> so misguided, so misled. But they're going to do that. And Christians want to be protected from them at all times. Be discernful. There are some people that are not going to want to hear what you have to say at the risk of your own life. Eventually, there may even be a bounty on your head as a Christian. A harlot will have the blood of Christians on her. And probably other people as well. The harlot is setting things up for the Antichrist. They're working together initially. Here be one of the leaders as we get into this, and then he's gone, and then he's back again. And he gets killed, and then he gets resurrected. So he'll be definitely part of all this. But we won't be here to put up with that. But your friends that get left behind, make sure they know. You might give them a Bible and a... Okay, here's campsite 12. Give them a Bible and some tracts and a, instructions on what to do. And tell them, don't open until you are ready to accept Jesus Christ. That might get their attention. <clears throat> and they may be more than happy to just throw it on the top shelf in the cl closet and not worry about it. But there come a time where they will run to that box 
tear it open and see what to do. Okay. I am at the river. See if you can see. Uh, orange tree there to my right on the screen. Okay, somewhere in there is an eagle's nest. I may stop this and turn it around. I haven't gotten to a store yet to get a new selfie stick. I hate driving into town. That's where all the crazies are. I'm in the wild out here and it's not wild. I drive into town and it's wild. All right. Stay in the scriptures daily. If you want to do a formal Bible study, that's great. If you're doing one at church and you've got homework, do that. Don't come unprepared. But don't go through your day unprepared. Pray in the morning. Pray throughout the day. Pray without ceasing, it says. But have a good formal prayer in the morning, one in the evening to wind up the day, and throughout the day. Read the scriptures. Work on a memory verse. Don't take this lightly. This is not going to be a game. This is not going to be something fun for the world to go through. You're going to have to be in it just a tiny little bit. But if you're not prepared, it might affect you more than you would like. Talk to Jesus every day. If nothing more, he would enjoy it. He wants to hear us. He loves us. For those of you that have kids that have gone off and you don't hear from them, imagine what it's like when they call. Now, multiply that by a million and you got God. Okay, I'm going to shoot some B footage around here as I walk around. I'll tack it at the end. This is my moving day video and then I'll be at my new campsite which just so happens is right on the other side of this river it's in a little ways but that's where I'm going all right get my glove off till we meet in the clouds God bless all right somewhere over there is the eagle's nest I don't see any movement I think it's in that tree right in the center of the screen right now. I'm still looking, but I don't see any other movement. All right. The main rapids are still up that way. There's a few here. So I keep walking through the park. The way this park works is every time you see a table, trash can, and fire pit, that's a campsite. Now, I'm in a spot currently that doesn't have that. Some of the workers here are going to be happy that this winter is slowing down the growth of the grass out there. Because when I was here before, they were mowing that. It took them three days to mow it. And I could tell by looking at it that they were going to be back in another three or four and do it again. Little squirrel up there in the tree. I'm still surprised that I don't see deer. 
deer vegetarians. They do eat berries and that, but they eat grass. And you'd think I'd see some out there eating, maybe even sunning themselves. But I've never seen deer there now. I've seen six deer in the last two days, but I've been moving. In my car, I've seen five of them. One of them I saw on the trail. If you're into horseback riding, there's places and trails for, for you guys as well. Down at the end of this run, and I think I'm done going that direction, because um, it's pretty much just like this. There is a boat ramp, and you can go out in the river. You can see a little ways, I can look across there and see a little ways into the woods. But I'm so far away on this side of the grass that there's no way I could spot anything. So the sun is up quite a bit. It's got to be maybe 11 o'clock. It provides light, as we've talked about. It's always important to remember that you can't get away from bad people no matter where you go. But it's, it provides light. <laughs> Almost got hit on the head by a walnut. This is where I showed you some of the walnuts from before. But it also provides warmth. We would not be alive if we didn't have that sun. And whether you spell it S-U-N or S-O-N, we need that light. You can feel good by just feeling the light. I'm in kind of the shadows right now going through the trees. And I can feel that cold air on the back of my head. <clears throat> Yet I walk into the sun and I kind of forget about it. That's the way Jesus is. You got his light in you and shining around. You forget about what's going on around you. All right. That's probably enough. If you're still here, thanks for sticking it out. We'll see you in the next video. Blessings.